If there's one specific type of movie that gets people talking, it's got to be the kind that has a mixed reception. Whether it be a sequel to a popular franchise, an adaptation of some different source material, or even cult classics, there's something to be said about movies that end up dividing people. In most cases, I think people get drawn to these kinds of stories because they're just curious to find out how a movie got that kind of a reputation. So it makes for really good conversation when they eventually find someone else to talk about it with. And this movie is a prime example of that sort of story. In 1986, the first film in what would become a pretty well-known franchise was released with Russell Mulcahy's Highlander, the story of an immortal man who fought against other immortals until the time of the Gathering, where the remaining few would fight and kill each other by cutting their heads from their bodies in combat in order to obtain the prize. The story spanned across a ton of different time periods and historical events that culminated in 1985, where just a few immortals remained. It featured a pretty stellar cast with actors like Christopher Lambert, Clancy Brown, and the legendary Sean Connery donning its principal roles. But when the movie came out, it was anything but praised. Back when the film was first released, Highlander didn't even fare well at the box office, opening at like number seven and having to wait until home video and cable to really take off and gain a following. This is fascinating when you acknowledge the fact that it also came out with an accompanying album by rock group Queen, who created some truly incredible music for the film. In fact, the music is so good and goes so well with what was shot for the movie that it's kind of become weird to not talk about one without mentioning mentioning the other. But maybe the film just had a rocky start and had to be discovered in order for people to truly understand how great it is, right? I mean, even if you haven't seen Highlander, you've more than likely heard people talk about it before when they mention other 1980s action films. So it's got to be one of those excellent titles like Lethal Weapon, Die Hard, or maybe even something like Braveheart from the 90s. Well, here's the thing about Highlander. In all honesty, it's not one of the greatest movies ever made, not even close. But it is one of the most badass stories ever told, and it's something that spawned a great deal of sequels that have gone on to garner a reputation of their own. While people have no doubt talked up its brilliance as a film to a great degree over the years, it's not as good as other franchise movies like Jurassic Park, it's not as good as Jurassic World, and I don't even think it's on par with The Lost World myself, but it is a good movie, and I'm going to be going into detail on why that is, as well as what holds it back from being among truly excellent 1980s filmmaking. But before I go into that, I have to explain some more of what we're talking about here and what the film does so well. Highlander opens up with a mysterious monologue from Sean Connery, telling us that from the dawn of time, a group of unkillable warriors has been moving silently throughout the centuries and struggling to reach the time of the gathering, where the few who remain will kill each other in order to gain something called the prize. No one has ever known they lived amongst us, and in the end, there can be only one. We then begin the movie proper with an awesome song called Princes of the Universe, which talks about people being born for greatness, but forced to fight in some kind of mythical edge of heavy metal hard rock battle. Before transitioning to 1985 New York, where a mysterious man watches a wrestling match, while also thinking back to a field of battle in the highlands of Scotland. Something really big happened there a long time ago, and he seems to know about it. Suddenly, he senses something unknown to us, gets up from his seat, and walks out to the parking garage, where a very strange man challenges him to a duel by pulling out an ancient sword in an attempt to cut his head off. The man we've been so far following pulls out his own sword, a Japanese katana that doesn't match what he looks like at all just before their really strange battle starts. In the end, Connor, the main protagonist, cuts the challenger's head off, killing him. But after that goes down, Electrical currents start screwing with all the machinery and vehicles in the garage. Connor stretches his hands out to the sky and absorbs some sort of mystical energy that flows from the dead man's body, and he literally takes the electrical power from his opponent, which makes him stronger. This is all followed up with the sirens of local police who have been drawn to the area after all of those explosions, leading Connor to hide his weapon, jump in his car, and flee the scene. The movie unfolds as something of a mystery, and you don't really have a full picture of what's going on until maybe the middle part of the story. Story. But suffice it to say, the film made a really big entrance, which would get even more grand with the introduction of Sean Connery and Clancy Brown in the time to come. The latter of which gets a very Judas Priest or Iron Maiden sort of outfit accompanying him and even quotes Def Leppard lyrics at one point in the film. I have something to say. It's better to burn out. 
You see, Highlander was directed by someone who had a long list of MTV music videos under his belt from the likes of Duran Duran, The Vapors, and even The Buggles' massive hit of Video Killed the Radio Star. That music video, one of the most well-known for MTV and what kicked off that whole network in a sense, was done by him. So he was a very good director in the field of merging music with story, which is something you can see really easily in Highlander with some transitions and camera work that feel way ahead of their time. In one of the earliest parts of the film, the first death of Connor McCloud zooms out of the eye of the now modern alias of Russell Nash while he's speeding away from the wrestling match in his Porsche. And the first time you see it, you just have to really stop and appreciate the talent that's going on behind the camera right here and take in how ambitious this whole thing really is, especially for the 1980s. Now, speaking of music video transitions and storytelling in the movie, probably one of the most memorable scenes involves a montage that shows the death of Connor's first wife, set to Queen's music from Who Wants to Live Forever. And this too is another example of a really well done piece of filmmaking that dives into how lonely and sad it can be to be cursed with a life of immortality. It's not something that I think could have been pulled off so excellently outside of the 1980s, and the way the director shoots and frames everything is kind of depressing to watch, but in a good way since it's tied so seriously to how the main character must feel. This is all really good stuff. But I'm getting ahead of myself here. In order to really appreciate the awesomeness that is Highlander, you have to stop and talk about the other two guys who play major roles in the story. The first of which is the man who killed Connor McCloud in the 1500s. This mysterious man appears on a black horse donning golden armor with a helmet looking like some sort of saber-tooth cat or monster that he wears on his head. The man is only known as the Kurgan, an immortal from the stacks of Russia who seeks to win the prize for himself. He's introduced as only helping a rival family clan in Scotland fight the MacLeods so that he can chop off Connor's head himself and be a step closer to the gathering. This of course doesn't go so well since Connor lives to fight another day. Unfortunately, his village banishes him for believing his survival to be some act of devilry, and he's cast out as a loner until he meets his first wife, which is followed by the introduction of Sean Connery, who seeks Connor out and names himself Juan Sanchez Villalobos Ramirez, the chief metallurgist of Spain. Ramirez tells Connor that he essentially cannot die. However, others will try to come for him and make his life a living hell because he's been blessed with immortality. Ramirez, just like Connor in the Kurgan, is an immortal, and he explains what's going on in far more detail than what's been given before. The way the prize is to be won is through the severing of an opponent's head, which will kill even an immortal and trigger something called the quickening, which is the electrical current that exists within all living beings. Eventually, when only a few of them remain, they will be drawn to a far off place and forced to fight for the prize, but while doing so, they must abide by a few sacred rules, such as combat only being one-on-one -on -one and the forbiddance of battle on holy ground. Since they are all immortals, none of them can have children and all of them will be forced into conflict. In the end, there can be only one. Now, the rest of the movie I'll leave for anyone to look up themselves if they haven't been spoiled too much just yet. Highlander is a really well-told movie with some great side characters and fun special effects that makes for a solid 1980s classic. The music by Queen goes perfectly in every scene it's in, and the mystery of what's going on makes for one hell of an interesting plot. With that being said, the movie does fail at being as good as it could have been through some kind of obvious problems in my opinion. First and foremost being its MTV-isms and how that can oftentimes devolve into goofy humor that feels like it's better suited for a David Lee Roth music video than a feature-length movie about a bunch of serious guys trying to kill each other all the time. There's a specific moment where the Kurgan actually steals a car from some elderly people that stands out in particular as just being way over the top and that's also preceded by a really silly flashback scene involving France in 1783. Stuff like this is more than likely why the film wasn't received as excellently as it could have been upon release. And when you couple that with some of the very music video looking set design and parts of the film like Kurgan's fight against Ramirez and the Silver Cup Studios finale, well, I for one can see pretty obviously what turned people off here. Still, when Highlander is doing what it does best, it makes for one really fun action movie that actually dives more into drama and romance than you'd expect. Christopher Lambert plays the role pretty straight and comes off as a rather dark and tortured man that just wants this shit to be over already, and when the film stops to explore what it means to truly live forever and have everyone you know and love die around you, well that's when I think it really carves out a name for itself. 
Clancy Brown gives an extremely cool performance long before he voiced Mr. Krabs, and the explanation as to where his raspy voice came from is equally cool. Sean Connery's reveal of where he comes from and who he is also comes off as really interesting and kind of unique in comparison to other films of the time, revealing to us that he's not actually Spanish and is instead Egyptian. He's lived for over 2,000 years and got his Japanese katana sword from the father of his last wife. The same sword which would later be used by Connor McCloud during the time of the gathering that we see go down in the film. Highlander features some kind of strange editing at times, and I wish it were a little longer to even out the pace, but for all its cheesy moments and technical issues, it's also one of the most badass stories to ever come out of the 1980s. And when you pair it up with that music from Queen, it's the definition of awesome. This is like borderline heavy metal. It's really hard rock. It's really dark, really cool, and really original with some of the most innovative ideas and visual storytelling you can find in that entire decade. But is it as good as Star Wars, Jurassic Park, Ghostbusters, The Godfather, anything like that? Sadly, I don't think so. But hey, it's pretty fucking cool. Anyways guys, these are all just my own thoughts on the film and what I think about it upon rewatch. I want to eventually work my way through the series and talk more about all of them because I've just watched the TV show for the first time, believe it or not, and surprisingly it's far better than I expected it to be at all, and in fact really makes the rest of the franchise look pale in comparison. I'll get to that someday, but for now, whatever your own thoughts and opinions on Highlander happen to be, I'd love to hear them in the comments down below.